welcome all today's topic is history of karnataka introduction the history of karnataka can be classified into prehistoric period from 10000 bc to 300 bc and historic period from 300 bc to yesterday according to the puranas and epics the antiquity of karnataka can be taken back to 3102 bc prehistoric period covers stone age culture no records are available to know the life of the people of the stone age how they lived is merely guessed from the study of pottery stone tools metal tools and bones of the dead mortimer wheeler captain midow styler sampath ayangar ms nagaraja rao zia uddin a desai r v joshi a sundara k pedaya and m shashadri have made an extensive research in this field some of the main sites of the prehistoric age are kibbanahalli in tumkur lingadahalli in chikkamagalur talya in chitradurga halkundi in bellari nyayamati in shivamogga kada in bijapur tinarsipura in mysore jadeganahalli in bengalur hunsagi in gulbarga historic period began from the time of the availability of written records edicts coins and palm leaves the edicts show that chandragupta maurya died at shravana belagola in karnataka around 300 bc this may be regarded as the beginning of the historical period the name karnataka is mentioned in sabha parva and bhishma parva of mahabharata karunadar in shilapadi garam by illana govan in tamil karnata in brahat samhita by varaha mihira and karnata in mrucha katika by shudraka karunadagam in velvakundi copper plate by parantaka chola in chola edits the name karnataka and kannada is mentioned kannada and karnataka in maharashtra edicts karnata by katha sarita sagara by somadeva kannada nadu in kaviraja marga by drupadunga kannadi in uh, gujarati edicts and maharashtra edicts karnataka by in kave mimamse by rajashikara kanara and kanari in goa records by portuguese the kannada scholars and historians have explained the term as follows karnatakam means the black soil land in this this has been accepted by chaldwell bm shri and others in tamil karnatakam means the land of hill or elevated land let us know the nature scope and importance of karnataka karnataka is endowed with a vast natural wealth and great historical tradition it has acquired a special status in the history of india in the field of culture it attained universal recognition it has also developed its own style in literature and fine arts with all ups and downs in its long history it has retained historical continuity and cultural wealth these aspects may be studied under the following heads nature karnataka has been the place where many kingdoms have been founded several dynasties have ruled it it has a splendid cultural heritage unity in diversity tolerance coordination right understanding and compromise are important aspects of its culture it has been patronized and nurtured by its kings saints poets intellectuals reformers preachers and artists here we see the blending of the aryan culture of the north and the dravidian culture of the south from 200 ad to 1947 many royal dynasties have ruled it for long periods from the time of the shatavahanas to that of the odayars it has given birth to several dauntless heroes and heroines like gautami putra shatakarni mayura varma bulakeshi 2 Govind III, Krishna Devaraya, Keladi Channamma, Kittur Rani Channamma and others. 
Now let us know the scope scope of Karnataka. Generally, Karnataka is the most elevated land in South India. It has extended from the river Narmada to the river Kaveri as revealed by the edicts belong to the Badami Chalukyas. Drupatanga in his Kaviraja Marga has mentioned Kannada Nadu, the land between rivers Narmada and Godavari. By the 9th century, Karnataka has been shrunk up to the borders of the Godavari. Historically, the Chalukyas and Rashtrakuta king have extended it from Kannauj to the Kanyakumari. Now, let us know the importance of Karnataka history. Karnataka history has a glorious uh, Karnataka has a glorious history that is nearly 2000 years old and it has maintained the political unity of the state it has been due to the effort of the Kadambas Gangas Chalukyas and Rashtrakutas the emperors of Vijayanagara the Adil Shah sultans of Bijapur and the Mysore Odias after the fall of Vijayanagara, the state fell apart and was controlled by Palaygaras. Once again, they were consolidated by the efforts of Haider and the Odeyars. Tipu lost more than he gained. With the diplomacy adopted by the Maharani Lakshma Manni, once again the state was restored to the Odeyars from the British. The name of Karnataka has come to the fore in many ways. It is first in many aspects. Kittur Rani Chanamma was the first queen who fought bravely against the English even 36 years earlier to Jansi Lakshmi Bai. Now, geographical features of Karnataka and their influence on history. Karnataka includes a great portion of the western part of Deccan Plateau. Extend from 11 degree 31 minutes latitude to 18 degree 48 minutes latitude and longitude 74 degree 12 minutes to 78 degree 50 minutes. Karnataka is bound by Maharashtra and Goa in the north, Tamil Nadu and Kerala in south, Andhra Pradesh in and Telangana in east and about 350 kilometer long coastal line of the Arabian Sea. In the west, the land is 2000 feet above the sea level. The extent of present Karnataka is 1,91,773 square kilometer. There are 31 districts uh, in Karnataka. Karnataka can be classified according to its natural features as follows. The coastal region that is North and South Canada districts, the Malnad, the Sahyadri of the Western Ghats, river valleys, the Northern Plains and the Southern Plains. The coastal region. The coastal region includes the western part of North Canara, Udupi and the South Canara district. It extends over an area of about 20 to 30 kilometers between the Arabian Sea and the Western Ghats. The annual mean rainfall is 100 inches. River Sharavati, Tadri, Bedi, etc. originate from the Western Ghats and bring in the alluvial deposit to the coast. Ankola, Kumta, Honnavara, Batkala in the northern coast and Mangalore and Malpe in the south and the Netravati river delta are the seaport which have played an important role in trade and commerce of and cultural life of Karnataka. About 350 km long sea coast provided opportunities for the development of seaports, seaports like Karwara, Batkala, Mangaluru, Basru, ba Barakur, Ullal, Malpe, Ruled by the rulers of Kadamba, Keladi, Alupa, Gerusopa, Vijayanagara, Bahamani, Adil Shahi, Portuguese, Mysore by Haidar and Tipu. The coastline encouraged foreign trade with countries like Persia, Arabia, Africa and Europe. This led to foreign invasions by the Portuguese, Dutch, French, British along with commerce. Christianity also entered in Karnataka. Let's study about the Malnad. The region of the east of the western Ghats is the Malnad. It is 150 meters above mean sea level 
and includes mountain as high as 900 meters. This region can boost off the heavy rainfall as high as 250 centimeters in Ag Agombe annually. It has thick forests. The ghats are full of curves near Sakleshpura. The ghat is about 3 miles in width. The Malnad is very rich in natural resources and it can claim a pleasing cool climate. The forest and the mineral wealth of the Malnad help the promotion of trade and commerce with the plains and coastal areas. Spices, sandalwood, teak and minerals etc. were the chief articles of export from the days of Roman Empire to the present. The Western Ghats and the Sahyadri like the spinal column of Karnataka, the Sahyadri mountain range of the Western Ghat extends in west up to the Nilgiri Mountains. It is about 2000 feet to 3000 feet above mean sea level. One of the biggest portion of this range, the Baba Budan Hill, has the peak called Mullayanagiri, whose height is about 1125 meters. The Kudre Mukha has a height of 1894 meters. The Charmudi and Agumbe Ghat between the Chikkamagaluru and Mangaluru are the two famous ranges. The natural resources of the Sahyadri forest are of the constable variety. Manganese, iron ores and also valuable teak wood, sandal wood, bamboos are abundant. The bamboo are the main source of the Dhandeli and Badravati paper factories. The iron and the steel plant of Badravati and also the electricity generating station at Jog have been have given new dimension to the development of this area. The River Valley The major river of Karnataka are Krishna, Tungabhadra and Kaveri. The tributaries of Krishna are Malaprabha, Gataprabha, Tungabhadra and Bhima. The tributaries of Kaveri are Hemavati, Kabini, Simsha, Subarnavati, Arkavati. Small rivers on the west coast are Kali, Gangavali, Sharavati, Netravati. These river valleys provide all facilities for the major kingdom like the Gangas, Kadamba, Chalukya and Rashtrakuta, Hoysala, Vijayanagara, Bahamani and Mysore. Some of the capital cities like Talakadu on the river Kaveri, Badami on the Malaprabha near the Bhima, Dwarasamudra on the Yagachi and Hemavati, Vijayanagara on the Tungabhadra, Sri Rangpatna and Mysore near Kaveri prospered. Thus, these river valley became the cradle of mighty kingdoms as well as minor kingdoms like Keladi, Kodagu, Chitradurga. Next, let's know about the northern plains. The districts of Bijap, Bidar, Bijapura, Raichur and Gulbarga and also the eastern parts of the Dharwad and Belgam district constitute the northern plains. This region is generally a plain with minor topographical variation and is famous for its black soil. Some hill regions, uh, hill ranges are found here and there. Oil seeds and cotton are the chief crops. Scarcity in, scarcity in rains and hot summers are characteristic feature of the northern plains. The southern plains. The eastern portion of Chitradurga, Davangere, Tumkur, Bangalore, Kolara, Mandya, Kernagara, uh, Mysore are included in it. Topographically and characteristically, the, this region has diversity. In these plains, vast areas were bought under cultivation to grow food grains, oil seeds, cotton, sugarcane, etc. Planes provide easy transportation which in turn helped easy movement of army and food articles. The mighty kingdom of Chalukyas and Rashtrakuta extended their territories from northern plains of Gulbarga, Bidar and other parts of Maharashtra to southern plains of Mysore and parts of Coimbatore and Tanjavur. Now let's know about the tribes and races of Karnataka. 
वी कैन नॉट डेफिनेटली से वेन मैन फाउंड इज अबाउट इन कर्नाटका बिकॉज वी डू नॉट फाइंड द फॉजिल रिमेन्स ऑफ प्री हिस्टोरिक मैन इन कर्नाटका एज वी डू फाइंड इन अफ्रीका द रिमेन्स ऑफ द पिलियोलिथिक मैन इज मोस्टली नॉट फाउंड एंड वॉट एवर ट्रेसेस एंड रिमेन्स ऑफ प्री हिस्टोरिक मैन दैट वी कम अक्रॉस इन कर्नाटका बिलोंग टू न्योलिथिक एज दैट इज फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड टू थाउजेंड बी सी फ्रॉम द लैंग्वेज एंड द जियोग्राफी वी कैन कंक्लूड दैट मेनी पीपल ऑफ कर्नाटका माइग्रेटेड फ्रॉम नेबरिंग लैंड्स दे माइट हैव कम फ्रॉम कड़प्पा एंड कार्नूल इन द ईस्ट फ्रॉम कोयमूर एंड नीलगरीज इन द साउथ एंड फ्रॉम कोचिन इन द वेस्ट इन द सेम वे पीपल फ्रॉम कर्नाटका मस्ट ऑल्सो हैव माइग्रेटेड टू अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री इन फैक्ट द टोडास हु लीव इन द नीलगरीज मस्ट हैव माइग्रेटेड फ्रॉम कर्नाटका अकॉर्डिंग टू प्रोफेसर एक्सलेंट महिषा मंडला दैट इज द लैंड ऑफ बफलोज मस्ट हैव बीन द प्लेस ऑफ origin their interest and expertise in buffalo breeding strengthen this opinion there are different tribes in karnataka namely todas lambanis korachas komaras vadas soligas badagas bunds billavas parivars koragas melars hasalas kadu kurbas etc these tribes are mainly found in the forest and hills of karnataka most of them were strangers to civilization till very recent times but after 1940s most of these tribes came into contact with civilization and they are trying to give up their lonely way of life in order to safeguard their interest the government is taking up many measures they are given facilities in many fields like education employment transport and communication scientific knowledge gradually they are will showing willingness to integrate themselves in the village communities let us study about few tribe peoples soligas The Soligas live in the region of Bilgiri Rangana Hills. They talk in the dialect of Old Kannada. They wear minimum amount of clothing. They live in bamboo huts. They have tattoos. There are different groups among Soligas like Panchakula and Saptakula Soligas. Badagas The Badagas are nomadic tribe have come to Nilgiri Hills. However, now they have settled down in Chamraj Nagara area after finding many crafts to develop their skills. Hence, they are more civilized than other tribes. They speak old Kannada language. According to Thurston, they are phrenologically long-headed and not have round headed like kannadigas they live in the border of karnataka and tamil nadu however as they speak a dialect of kannada it is safe to assume that they were also like todas who migrated from karnataka next billavas idigas are called billavas in tulu language the n- number of billavas in south kannada is considerable they have many splinter group they speak tulu toddy tapping is their main profession koragas koragas are found in puttur moodbidre and uppinangadi areas of south kannada district meleroos and others meleroo tribes are also found in the south kannada district of malnad like other tribes the life of meleru is also a difficult one the effect of civilization is slowly spreading and they are not as sound in economic position as badagas apart from the ebo there are kudias gollas parivaras hasala kadukurubas and other tribes in karnataka
this is this is for the introduction of karnataka history in next class let's learn about the sources of karnataka history thank you all